forgive the not ideal lighting, but with Vlogmas, you have lots of videos that you have to do, and I just have a really long nap window here. I can't believe they're both napping for so long. So I'm taking advantage of that, and I wanted to bring you a video about my top 10 mystery series. So I am in the middle of, I think, over 30 series, um, a lot, too many, and I need to finish some. But I did want to talk about my top 10. So the first one that came to mind was the Maisie Dobbs series by Jacqueline Winspear. This is a wonderful historical mystery series that spans from um, right after World War I and then it's now currently World War II where the series is at. I'm not caught up all the way. Uh, but it's just an amazing series where it has so much character development and so much heart to it. You really get to know Maisie so deeply and care for her so deeply and the side characters that you get to see in them. Um, it is a kind of, it has an ache about it. It's, it's a sort of sad series, but I think I like that about it. It just feels incredibly real and the characters feel very flesh and blood to me. So I think sometimes in mysteries, you know, character development can really be sacrificed in order, you know, for the fun of a mystery. But in this series, it is not at all. And it is just a spectacular series that I can't recommend enough, particularly, particularly the audiobooks, which I really like. Uh, next on the list is the Inspector Wexford series by Ruth Rendell. For the literary fiction lovers out there, this is a great one. And um, it's really interesting to see Inspector Wexford with his partner, Mike Burden, kind of juxtaposed because um, Wexford is very much a bleeding heart liberal. And Wexford is really good at seeing the course of justice, like what should happen. He's very logical. He's very heady. Um, so it's really neat to see them work together because I think they really balance one another out. Um, and yeah, it's just, a, it's a really interesting combination. I love getting um, little glimpses of Wexford's personal life uh, throughout. And she's really great. Ruth Rendell's really great at tying in a social justice issue into each book that has to do with the mystery. Uh, so it's just a lovely, lovely series. Third is the Armand Gamache Mysteries by Louise Penny. Um, Louise Penny just seems like such a cool person. Every time I see an interview with her, I just, I'm like, I want to know you. I want to be in a book club with you or go out, you know, for coffee with you. And uh, the Gamache Mysteries are a really interesting combination in that they have an extremely cozy setting of Three Pines, this sleepy little village. But on the other hand, the mysteries that happen, the murders that happen, don't have a cozy feel to them. And there's so much psychological analysis and character development that it's not a cozy. So it's a really special and unique series. And again, these audiobooks are very good. Unfortunately, Ralph Kasham, who illustrated the, who narrated the vast majority of the books, did pass away. So um, the last four books are not um, narrated by him. But the new narrator and the last book that I listened to was definitely good. I just missed um, the original one that I knew. Fourth on the list is the Her Royal Spyness series by Reese Bowen. An extremely fun, cozy mystery series that has kind of the setting and era. It feels like a P.G. Woodhouse um, setting. And it has humor and it has uh, just really fast-paced plots. If you want something that you can just, uh, you, if you have like no... Um, if you really are like, I can't, I can't even focus, you know, you're going to be able to read these books. They're just so much fun. And I love getting to see Georgie traveling in all sorts of settings in Scotland or England or um, Nice or in um, Romania. Just it's really such a fun series that I can't get enough of. Uh, the next one is the Amelia Peabody series by Elizabeth Peters. This is a historical mystery series which follows Amelia and her husband Emerson. They are um, archaeologists and Egyptologists, and it's a really neat twist to have in a mystery, kind of these um, archaeological aspects to murders, and um, it just makes it really different and unique. And the Egyptian setting is just really spectacular, how you can have, like, black market artifacts being part of the plot. It's uh, so much fun. And the dialogue is something that I really enjoy every time I read one. Next on the list is the Lady Emily series by Tasha Alexander. I've only read two in this series, but this is how much I love the series that I'm putting it on my favorites. I just, 
it's oh, it's like full of juicy gossip and it's such page turners as full of romance as it is mysteries set in the Victorian era. Lady Emily is a recent widow and um, since she is a widow she has a little bit more freedom than if she were just a single woman. Um, but yes, very gripping and I just can't wait to continue on with this series. Um, next is the Inspector Lindley series by Elizabeth George. Uh, I just, I feel as emotionally attached to these characters as I do characters from classic novels. It has the most amazing character development um, and you really get a window into their soul from the different crimes that they solve. You can kind of tell how they're processing it and different input that they might have for it. Um, like I said, so much character development, things happening in their personal lives and just so eloquently written. So many passages that I'll read and I'll have to stop and go, wow, was so beautiful. I'm going to read it again and then I'm going to annotate, you know, underline it. An amazing series. Next is the Mary Stewart books. These are not a detective series, but Mary Stewart has been such a big part of my mystery reading this year that I'm just including her mysteries on the list. She has um, kind of mysteries with a romantic um, flavor to them, usually some element of romance in them, but it usually involves a woman traveling alone and um, kind of stumbling into something suspicious that's happening. And so trying to make heads or tails of it. And I just adore her books. So I'm including it on this list, even though it's not a series. Uh, next is the Poirot series by Agatha Christie. It took me a long time to learn to love Poirot, but now that I do, I'm very attached. And actually, I think watching the TV series helped me to become attached. Um, his flaws used to annoy me, whereas now they endear me to him. He's very particular. Um, he knows what he likes and um, he's not afraid to tell you. And um, But it's this that also helps him be so attentive to detail. So it's just a wonderful series. And I'm so excited to have so many Poirot mysteries ahead of me. And then lastly on the list is the Agatha Raisin Mysteries by M.C. Beaton. Uh, this is a really fun, cozy mystery series that's set in the modern day in the Cotswolds. And Agatha is a really unique um, sleuth in that she's extremely sardonic and um, sarcastic. And she puts a lot of people off. But man, does she know how to get stuff done when she's investigating a mystery when it comes down to it. Um, there's always personal drama with her. And um, I love the kind of cast of recurring characters that are in the little village that she lives in of Carsley. And um, I, I love her continually um, agonizing over whether or not she's, you know, cut out for a life in the Cotswolds, the calm Cotswolds, all, all whilst, you know, there's a murder that happens in each, um, each book. So I love the Agatha Raisin series and I recommend it highly if you like cozy mysteries. I hope you enjoyed hearing about this. Please let me know some of your favorite mystery series. I'm always looking for recommendations, even though I am in the midst of too many mysteries, but um, I, I like having options. So I hope you guys are enjoying Vlogmas and I will see you for another Vlogmas video tomorrow.